Oh, I didn't tell you. I changed the reservation time. And you didn't show up, so I got on first. I could hear a woman giggling sitting right next to my husband, Harry, on the other end of the phone. How could you do that? Come back quickly! Huh? It's your fault for being so lazy that you got yourself left behind. You can handle the rest on your own. And I cancelled your ticket anyways because it cost a lot. That's not what I mean. Oh, we're going under a tunnel now, so I'm hanging up. You should just give up and go home quietly. Saying that, my husband hung up the phone without any hesitation. No, that's not what I meant, and if it keeps on going his way, they're going to be in big trouble. I'm a housewife who has been married to my husband, Harry, for five years. We got married after we had a child, so our son, Tom, is now six years old. For a while after we got married, the three of us got along well, but gradually, Harry became indifferent to our son. I will protect you, Janet, and our son. I wonder if my husband's words were a lie when he swore that to me. Looking back, I feel as if he was talking me into it. Harry says he is busy with work and doesn't really pay attention to our son at all, and when I tell him to pay more attention to Tom, he doesn't listen to me at all. Recently, I have been receiving a lot of harsh and heartless comments from him. The other day, Harry even said the word divorce in front of our son. I'm busy with work. You're just a housewife, right? My house, my rules. And if you have a problem with my rules, then why don't you just divorce me or whatever? I'll always agree to it. After all, if a woman like you is unattractive, a divorce will be the death of you. You can't make ends meet without my money, so don't you dare talk back to me. I wanted to argue against Harry, but as a housewife, I had no right to speak up. If I rebelled here, it was really going to be a divorce. To be honest, I had considered divorcing my husband many times before. But I could never take the plunge when I thought of our child's future. No matter how much the prejudice against single-parent household is disappearing in the society, it is only on the surface, and in reality, single parents are often ridiculed and looked down on. What is the right thing to do? For the past few days, every day had been like this, and I was exhausted, both physically and mentally. One day, as I was returning home from dropping my son off at daycare, I bumped into my neighbor, Sarah. Are you okay, Janet? You don't look so well. Is your son in kindergarten? I can't believe you're so tired, even though they're taking care of your son from early in the morning until late in the evening. Have you been tired from your work recently? Well, if you had a lot of attention and money like I do, I guess your life would be more fun. If I were a dull woman like you, I would have a hard time. I feel sorry for you. Sarah's husband is away from home for work, but I hear he makes a lot of money. She's always dressed in luxurious brand clothes and wears expensive accessories. But considering what she wears, she's not very elegant. And whenever I see her, she is always bragging about herself, her husband, and her son. She may not be a bad person, but I didn't like her very much. Ugh, everyone has so much to say, huh? I wished that she'd understand my feelings at least a little. Normally, I would have laughed it off, but I was really tired that day, so I couldn't help but complain about my husband. No, I'm just a housewife, so I'm not tired from work. My husband is always complaining about how busy he is and doesn't really show any interest to our son. Lately, he has been really irritated, and even in front of our son, he would say things like, If you complain, we'll get a divorce. I feel sorry for our child. After I told her, 
I regretted it complaining about Harry. When I looked at Sarah, the color of her eyes had changed. You're a full-time housewife. How dare you say that about your own husband, who is the breadwinner of the family? I feel sorry for your husband. I have never complained like that. My husband works hard, so it's only natural that as a wife, you should be taking good care of your own kids. This is why unattractive women like you... Oh, what a good wife and what a good mother I am. I wish you could learn from me too. Sarah takes the opportunity to look down on me and boast about what a good wife she is compared to me. I knew she'd do this. Maybe it's best not to get too deeply involved with her. After, I just kept the conversation light, greeted her, and hurried home. But that night, Sarah suddenly came over. Of course, I didn't invite her, but she invited herself in. I, for one, would like to get to know you a little better, Janet. Would you like to have dinner with me tonight? I like to cook, but my husband is very picky about food, so I'm visiting your house now since we've recently become friends and I'm going to learn a lot about cooking from you. Isn't it great that I'm motivated? I'd eat anything, so could you cook some food? Sarah and her child suddenly barges in and tries to eat our dinner without any hesitation. My husband, who is pretty friendly, gladly accepts them in, but it was me who served them. Sarah's children ran around as much as they wanted, and she and Harry had kept talking about how proud she was of them. I was deeply frustrated. We had finished preparing the meal and were sitting at the table when Sarah started talking about our conversation we had at lunch. Harry, you're doing your best though. You better make sure you tell your wife about that. I told her that since you work so hard, Harry, it's only natural that she should take good care of the child. I think that I'm perfect at that for our family. I work hard every day to take care of the house and the children for my husband. There's no way I could ever complain about that. Janet, you really complained to her about that? I can't believe you. You guys are only making a living because of what I earn? Do the bare minimum. I thought it was best not to make a scene, so I said, Yes, you're right. Sarah, who was watching this situation, suddenly says something out of the blue. Let's go on a trip to treat your husband. The kids will be graduating soon, and it's just in time, don't you think? My husband is working away from home, so I'm making my kids feel lonely. It's more fun with more people, and if it's okay with you guys, I'd be happy to go with you. I thought that even Harry wouldn't get on board with her idea, but he seemed quite pleased with Sarah who had stood up for him. Even the kids who were pure and innocent got involved, and everyone except me was in the mood for a trip. Leave all the preparations to Janet. She's a stay-at-home mom, so she has all the time for that. That's impossible! With your salary, we can never afford to pay for a trip for five people. Besides, it's a one-parent situation. You're blaming your own son? I can't believe you! You don't even appreciate me enough, huh? You're an absolute disgrace! That's right. You don't appreciate enough at all, Janet. You don't know your own worth. Then, do you think that you're a great person? I choked down the words that were about to come out of my mouth, and after apologizing to both of them, I had no choice but to plan the trip. Your neighbor is having a hard time without her husband, so you better do all the work. Who do you think whose fault is it that I'm raising our son all on my own? He can't just keep on getting away with this. He was really getting on my nerves, but I was just trying to suppress my frustration. 
With the hotels and the details of the plan you two mentioned, it would inevitably exceed several thousand dollars. If I spent that kind of money on a trip, all my savings would be gone. I've always been providing for all of us, so you should at least pay up this time. If you don't have it, be in debt, or borrow it from your parents. Well, if you're going to borrow money, it's only if you can pay it back over the course of your lifetime. No matter what I said, Harry was not going to listen to me. I gave up trying to argue further. After some trial and error using point cards and coupons, I finally managed to plan a trip. I was able to arrange a nice hotel to stay at, and Sarah was very satisfied with the plan. So my ideas were great, huh? I thought of every details and ideas so that you could have a nice getaway, Harry. I was the one who prepared everything, but Sarah speaks to Harry as if she herself had planned the whole thing. My husband was happy with her presentation. How useless you are when Sarah here is so talented. Shame on you, Janet, for making me feel like this. Why am I always the one to be blamed at? I never imagined this kind of marriage life. Still, I could not divorce for the sake of Tom. I desperately told myself that. On the day of the trip, I headed for the bus station with Harry and Tom. Ooh, yay, the bus! My son's eyes lit up as we were traveling for the first time in a long time. I got the tickets, so we waited for Sarah and her kids at the bus station. While we were waiting, Tom wanted to go to the restroom, so I took him to the restroom and returned to the bus stop to find that Harry had disappeared, leaving only our luggages behind. Where did he go? And Sarah still hasn't shown up either. I still couldn't get in touch with Harry even when it was time for the bus to depart. I had no choice but to call Sarah. I changed the time of the bus. Oh, I didn't tell you? We got on already. I guess your husband didn't tell you. He said he wanted to relax and ride on the premium limousine bus. So I changed it. I asked her to give the phone to Harry so I could talk to him, and my grumpy husband picked up the phone. To be honest, you and Tom disturb me a lot. I'm going to enjoy my trip with Sarah, who understands me. I'll head right over there, so can you please wait for me? I asked him nicely, but he brushed me off quickly. <sighs> it's not what I mean. My husband hung up the phone in the middle of our conversation. Sorry, I guess we can't make the trip. We were looking forward to it so much. I'm really sorry. It's going to be okay, because you're here, mommy. My son's kindness almost made me start to cry. Let's go home today. I'll take you somewhere better next time. When we returned home, a man in a suit is standing at Sarah's door. Does he want to see Sarah? Who on earth could he be? If he is related to Sarah, then I don't want to get too involved. I pretended not to know him and was about to walk by when he began to talk to me. Three days later, Harry called me. What happened to the hotel payment? Get me $3,000 right now. There is no way I can pay such a large amount of money. Why didn't you settle the bill in advance? You're so stupid. Come here right now. You asked me to leave and now you want me to come. I've had enough of this. I had gotten this hotel through my father's contacts. If I didn't go, then they would have to pay the regular amount of $3,000. When I was told not to come along on the trip, I had contacted my father and the hotel and told them what happened. If you don't pay up now, we're getting a divorce! Oh, really? That's great then. I wanted to divorce you anyways. When I was saying this, I had a huge smile on my face. Really? 
Then, what a great timing! I'm much more compatible with him and I'm able to support him. Thank you for divorcing him. You really are an idiot. Thanks. Unlike some idiot wife, Sarah really understands me. I'm sorry to the two of them who are getting all excited on their own, but it's so silly that it makes me laugh. Well, anyways, you have no choice but to pay for the hotel fee for now. Then Harry shut his mouth. Well, of course he would, because his salary is only $700. Harry was pretending that he was working at a major company. We managed to pay the rent where we live in now with passive income from the property I bought when I was still single. Yet Harry only provides about $300 a month, which he boasted about as if it was enough to cover all our food expenses. Honey, you know you shouldn't lie. Have you been lying? You have been lying, haven't you? I can't have a man who doesn't make enough money, okay? This means that my husband is way better. I said nothing more and handed the phone to the man next to me. I'm divorcing you! Janet! You! You have been cheating on me, haven't you? Why are you there, honey? I thought you were away working. To my surprise, the man in the suit who spoke to me three days ago was Sarah's husband, Jack. Three days ago, when I returned home after being left behind, I was approached by Jack, who had just returned home from his work. Upon hearing the situation, Jack had apologized repeatedly and told me that Harry and Sarah were having an affair. He said that he had come home suddenly without telling Sarah in order to get evidence of the affair. I asked my father to contact the hotel and ask them to take pictures of the evidence of Sarah and Harry's affair while they were staying at the hotel. All I could see in the pictures were light kisses and Sarah sticking to Harry's arm and being goofy. Harry, who looked happy and confident being with Sarah, was also sickening to say the least. I had the divorce papers as Harry had previously threatened to divorce me and had thrown the papers at me since he had already signed them. Eventually, as soon as I found out about the affair, I took the plunge and filed the divorce papers to finalize it. It was a decision I made after consulting with my child and thinking it through. And then finally, I was free from Harry. I was told that Sarah's kids were not at the hotel, so I hurried to look for them and found that they had been left at Sarah's parents' house. When Jack went to pick up the kids, he showed them about the affair and the photographic evidence, and Sarah's parents apologized to Jack with tears in their eyes. We were waiting to hear from Harry and Sarah, who had cheated on Jack and I while we were preparing for divorce. No, that's wrong. I heard that Janet was a housewife, so I pretended to have an affair with Harry so Janet would change her attitude. Sarah was doing her best to make ridiculous excuses. But it did look like she was doing everything intentionally because she did leave her kids at her parents' house and she was planning to have the affair with Harry with my money, so she couldn't get away with it. I'm sorry for all the things I have said. I will pay for this trip for my savings, so please forgive me. There was no way I could say, yes, that's right, I forgive you, to him that easily. Well, after all, a man like you, who is very unattractive, is finished once you get a divorce. You can't do anything without my money, so don't you dare argue back with my decision. I don't want a man who I can't really depend on. Harry was told by the hotel staff that if he couldn't pay up now, he would file a claim report to the police. But Harry's own savings were not enough, so he had to cry to Sarah's parents. In the end, Sarah's parents paid all the expenses for the hotel, and they were able to return home safely. Later that day, I hired an attorney to formally request a divorce, alimony, custody of my son, and child support. I told Harry, who insisted that Tom still needs a father, that he had been ignoring Tom 
and that he had left him behind, and told him once and for all that it was not better for Tom to be with him. And Jack was able to get a divorce without any problems too. Sarah, who didn't want to leave him, tried to stay at home, but he had moved only the things that were really important to him to his parents' house while she was cheating on him. So he left with the kids and divorced her through an attorney later on. Sarah, who was left at the house, had no income because she wasn't working and could no longer afford the rent, so she moved out. She should have moved out first, but for some reason, she stayed there and was charged a penalty fee and got evicted. Of course, Jack also demanded alimony, so Sarah had no choice but to return to her parents' house where her parents were beating her guts back into shape from the ground up. As for me, I feel fine because I can finally live with my son in peace. I invited Jack and his kids to stay at that hotel. I am so much happier than when my ex-husband was here, and so is Tom. I wish this life could go on forever. I thought to myself genuinely as I looked at the smiling faces of the kids.